Hello everyone. I am back with another story time video, if you will. Uh, today's video, well, first of all, grab yourself a coffee, tea, a uh, snack. Um, won't be too long, but it won't be three minutes. <laughs> so get comfortable and yeah, sit back, relax. I'm going to talk about, and I've got a little bit of notes here so I can stay on track. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my experience living in Los Angeles as a freelance violinist and musician and teacher. Okay, so I thought that I would talk about this because this is one of the like first questions I get asked, you know, teaching here uh, with the students that I've had. They all kind of want to know, oh my gosh, you lived in LA and oh, I want to do that. How do I do that? Um, I also have had, you know, even out in Los Angeles, uh, colleagues of mine or friends of mine asked me, you know, how did you get into the scene? Because I, I was for a couple years there getting called often, uh, going to do really cool projects, playing with big artists like Andrew Bocelli with Dead Mouse, um, playing, getting to go to the studios like Warner Brothers Studios, um, 20th Century Fox. You know, I got to get into all those studios and do some really cool stuff, which I'll highlight here at the end. Um, so yeah, everyone's asked me, okay, how did you do it? How did you get involved and what was your path? So I'm gonna start from the beginning. So this all started in 2012 when I moved out there for school. So I would highly recommend if you're a young student to maybe use school as your pathway to get out there because Los Angeles and California is very expensive. It's probably not, you know, rocket science to figure out, but yes, it's very expensive. So I would recommend getting into a program and oftentimes they'll offer you scholarship like I was on scholarship to go to California Institute of the Arts. So yes, and that also, not only will that help financially for you to get out there, but you're also gonna meet other people your age or other musicians that are gonna be trying to live in LA afterwards that you guys can all help each other and form that net of support in the musician world, which we need. So. Yes, uh, well, I studied from 2012 to 2014, and during that time I did not gig or do anything big. I think, oh, I did do one really big gig, and that was uh, through my teacher. So again, you're gonna notice a theme here that through people is how you're gonna get those opportunities. Um, so my violin teacher offered, offered me um, a chance to play with um, the YMF group, Young Musicians Foundation, and they were having a huge concert downtown LA. Um, that showcased John Williams himself coming in to, to conduct. And you can imagine, uh, my jaw dropped. I was like, yes, I will, I will stay up every night. I will do all the driving because I was kind of far away from downtown LA, but I didn't care. I was like on cloud nine. <laughs> so I got to do, so blessed that I got to do a concert playing his music with John Williams himself there, as well as Lynn Harrell. Uh, and, and rest in peace to, to Lynn Harrell. This, wonderful cellist. Um, I, I'm so blessed I got to perform with him once. So he, he came on stage and got to do a solo with John Williams. Um, but all, all that being said, that was my one big gig I did uh, as, yeah, as a grad student. So then, um, after that, oh, I, and there was actually one more, I'm forgetting. I also, again, through a, through a friend got connected uh, with the Golden State Pops Orchestra. I love them and they're right up my alley because as I said in the previous video, I love film music and that's all they play. So I got to do another big concert right before graduating and I met a lot of people through it. Um, and we played the highlights of so many films and those composers were actually there. So I got to play with Hans Zimmer, I got to play um, with uh, several others that I'm blanking on right now, <laughs> but they're all listed uh, on my bio. So John Williams and Hans Zimmer though, right off the bat, I was just like, oh my gosh, is this real? So that, that's California though for you. All those people are out there living and working with musicians all the time. So fast forward to then, post-graduation, I am following my notes. <laughs> See, I can get, I can trail off very easy and give you guys lots of stories, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stay to the course. Uh, after graduation, I, I moved, I moved to Glendale and I started to teach. That was kind of, that's what every musician I think should kind of find is either if you're not into teaching, maybe find an administrative job. You're going to need that base baseline of in of consistent pay. So I started to grow my private studio. 
Um, and then also just was connecting with more and more musicians. And at that time, I got hit with, okay, if I wanna make it here, I gotta do something. So this is my first big tip. I, I would look up all of the orchestras in California or Los Angeles and I emailed every single one asking if I could audition to be a sub player or asking if they need extra players or if I could audition in general to be in the orchestra. And I did get into one right off the bat, Santa Monica Symphony. Uh, while they are not um, a fully professional group, it was a great group to play with and I met a lot of people through that as well. So just get involved, play with as many groups as you can. Audition. At auditions is where you're gonna meet other great players. So that's what I started to do. I emailed everyone I could think of. I emailed other musicians who I saw that were my age getting into the scene, into the film studios. And then after a while, they started to say, okay, let's give you, give you a chance. Come on out here, let's do this recording studio project, let's do this. And um, then it just kind of snowballed in a good way <laughs> from there. And I started to get more and more opportunities. My second big tip is, and this is a big one, and all musicians will tell you this in the beginning, take everything, take every opportunity, even if it's a quick wedding gig on the beach, or um, I played in a country band for about a year, and I went to bars and played with the country band, played fiddle, but I met people through that. That's actually how I met um, two of my really close girlfriends now that are amazing violinists um, through that band and that experience. So again, everything leads to something else in LA. So take all of the opportunities and also don't be a hermit. You know, if you're not doing a gig, go, go watch someone else's gig. Uh, go, if someone's playing at the Blue Whale downtown, go check it out. Um, support other people and then they're gonna support you and they're gonna wanna help you out and give you a chance to gig as well. So that's kind of my second tip of making it in LA. Um, and yeah, my last two tips I would say would be to be nice, <laughs> be nice to people. You would be so surprised at, I had lots of encounters with great people, but I had encounters with people that weren't so nice. And whenever I had some gigs that I needed to fill, I was never going to call the person that was rude to me or that was stuck up or full of themselves. I was always calling the people that were comfortable. They were chill. They, they were grateful. They were nice. Um, so if you want to be called more, you've got to, you've got to kind of suck up your pride, even if something bothers you, <laughs> put on a smile, be pleasant, be polite, have manners, be respectful. So might be a no brainer, but sometimes again, it's something to just keep in mind. Um, and then finally, don't forget to practice. Practicing obvious is an obvious as well, but you'd be surprised at the musicians out there that also just kind of coast on on gigs hey i've even been guilty of it for seasons here and there but i remember i wasn't getting called as much when i wasn't on top of my practice so you've got to keep up that's part of your job you know to get up every day go over your scales go over the material practice for those um those recording sessions whatever you're doing whatever's coming up practice for it and you'll never be you'll never be sorry about that <laughs> it's always a good thing um, and then I guess I had one more tip and then I'm just gonna go over some highlights. My last tip is again to audition. I kind of touched on this before, but take auditions because you will meet people there. I took, um, I took auditions not only in Los Angeles, but I took them, I flew and did a couple in other states. That was again, just to put, it pushed me as an artist. It made me practice because you don't want to go to an audition uh, without putting in the work because then it's just a waste. Uh, so it always helped me in the end and I always felt better even if I didn't get those positions um, because I did get better as a violinist prepping for those. And it helps with your performance nerves if you're like me. I definitely struggled with that for years and that helped me every time to get more confident as a violinist because there are a lot of great players. You're, you're comp competing with a huge pool of great musicians and studio musicians and people who've been in the business for 20, 30 years. So yeah. All right, so I'm gonna end this by just, again, giving my final opinion slash, well, let's do highlights first. The highlights, my biggest performances that I'm grateful for that I, I just, that made my dream come true, definitely the John Williams concert with him himself and getting to meet him the Golden State Pops concert, getting to play that years ago with all of those amazing composers, uh, Michael Giacchino, uh, Hans Zimmer, many more again that are listed on my bio were there that day. Um, oh, Danny Elfman. 
Um, getting to play on the O.J. Simpson, the Made for America documentary that ended up winning an Oscar. I played violin for that. I got to work with Dead Mouse on his last album. And again, this is not um, me trying to brag. It's just me kind of showcasing the things I got the opportunity to do um, through my work and through my networking. And it hopefully will give you and some students, you know, students who are watching this, um, you know, encouragement that you can definitely get into the scene, but you've got to put in the work, be a pleasant human being and practice, and then you'll get that opportunity too. And my last one, and probably the one closest to my heart was getting to play at the Dolby Theater where they hold the Oscars with Andrew Bocelli. So that was definitely, I think, one of the most uh, beautiful, just amazing performances of my life. And I literally cried when I found out because it was one that I think I had manifested. It was, it was a, he was, a performer, an amazing, just cl classic, I'm like getting all tongue-tied. <laughs> He's just one of the best singers, I would say, in, in the world, and getting to play with him was just, just amazing. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna close with that, with the highlights, and just end this by saying I really, I actually, I'm thinking about going back, which is exciting. I'm currently on year two of being back in Texas because I came here to kind of sort some stuff out and get to be with my family a little bit. But um, yeah, Los Angeles is still there, still blooming, still going. Lots of good music and concerts are gonna be coming back. I think the gig life is, is always, always thriving out there. And if you love film music like me, that is the only place in the world to do it, honestly. Um, it just is, all the big sound stages are there. All the composers live there, um, amazing musicians live there, and it truly is, if you're up for the traffic and the high prices and the sacrifice, it is worth it, um, which is why I'm thinking of going back. So, all right, I hope that, oh, I'll also just, I, I wanna just say, I lived there for six years, for those who are curious, I lived there from 2012 to 2018. So, I did have a range of years to experience it, um, and like I said, I don't know if that's the end of my story. We'll see. I will document it here so that you guys will get to find out if it is the end of my story or not. But that was my experience. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope this was mildly interesting. And yeah, that's all for today. All right. Uh, happy practicing.